Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 21st, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, one item, of course, that's still sort of dominating a lot of the news is solar winds and Solari Gate or the Sunburst and uh, various other pieces of malware that have been found since then. Microsoft has a real good write up by the Microsoft 365 Defender Research Team in association with their Threat Intelligence Center and their Cyber Defense Operations Center. And they're sort of going step by step over how the attack worked and also what steps the attacker took to evade detection. Plus, of course, how you are able to detect these kinds of attacks, which uh, to summarize in short, isn't really easy. And uh, one thing uh, I found really interesting is a lot of people always talk about indicators of compromise, hashes and the like. And that's something that specifically fails here because the attacker took the time to custom develop uh, payloads for individual victims. So if you're just relying on hashes and the like, that's really not going to cut it in this case. Well, it's really about good TTPs, techniques, tactics, and procedures. How did the attacker operate? And that's sort of uh, what uh, this blog post by Microsoft uh, goes over. In addition, there are also new victims coming forward. With that, we do have a little bit uh, name confusion between like Teardrop, Raindrop, and of course the Cobalt Strike backdoor. Uh, various names being used for very similar uh, really functionality. But then again, because we have these custom payloads being deployed, everybody that's affected sort of finds something that's a little bit uh, different. Malwarebytes, the anti-malware company, also came forward that its uh, Office 365 environment was attacked and breached uh, by the same actor. Now, they did a careful analysis, they say, and they think that the attacker only got away with a few internal emails. They did audit their source code, but again, that's yet another supply chain style attack that could have happened here with an anti-malware vendor getting compromised. And I have to say, I appreciate companies like Malwarebytes coming forward and also sharing some of the techniques that they have seen in order to alert others. And just to uh, reiterate, uh, Malwarebytes is not a SolarWinds customer. They just believe that it was the same group that attacked them was the one that attacked SolarWinds. Then we got a couple of notable advisories from Cisco affecting its SD-WAN products. Uh, the first one is affecting the web-based management interface and has a CVSS score of 9.9. .9. It does allow an authenticated remote attacker to gain root level access to an affected system. The second one, CVE 2021-1300, has a CVSS score of 9.8, and an attacker could exploit this vulnerability by sending a crafted IP packet through an affected device, which then will cause a buffer overflow and again lead to remote code execution. A couple of different uh, SD-WAN products are affected and uh, check uh, the Cisco advisory for any details. Uh, there are also uh, three critical flaws in the Cisco Smart Software Manager satellite, also uh, with uh, CSS scores in the high nines. The first flaw affects the Cisco Smart Software Manager satellite or the Cisco Smart Software Manager on prem and uh, well affects uh, the web interface the second one the second one would be exploited via the command line interface on the cisco dna center and would allow an attacker to execute arbitrary commands on devices managed by this cisco dna center 
And when I'm teaching our defending web application class, uh, one sort of technique I always point out is if you hear about a flaw in software that's similar to the one that uh, you are developing, you probably should check your own code for similar vulnerabilities. Case in point, video conferencing software. Back in January 2019, so two years ago, there was a critical flaw in Apple's FaceTime. And essentially what happened here was that an attacker could attempt to initiate a video call, then try to add a second number. And even if the video call was rejected, the second number may still remain connected and be able to eavesdrop on the victim. Turns out that a number of other uh, chat programs uh, had a very similar vulnerabilities and uh, Google's project Zero took the time to enumerate these vulnerabilities. Similar vulnerabilities were found in Facebook, in S Signal, in GeoChat, as well as in Google uh, Duo's uh, video conferencing. And of course, they all use very similar protocols, in particular WebRTC, uh, that's sort of the web-based video conferencing and uh, really a misinterpretation or a misimplementation of the state machine in WebRTC led to these vulnerabilities. And finally, I always uh, tell you that uh, you should not underestimate cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. And as a quick sort of case in point, there is an interesting exploit now available for a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. This vulnerability was uh, fixed uh, earlier this month. So hopefully you applied uh, the patch. Uh, the exploit itself is as typical for cross-site scripting. Pretty straightforward. Well, once you know sort of what the magic escape character is that you should use. And well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.